In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen next to Bitcoin and how this breakdown right here might not be something that you need to worry about. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do about it so that you can profit off of this by giving you some trade ideas. Besides that, we're also going to discuss the midterm elections of the United States and why there is a very, very big opportunity waiting for you if you simply watch till the end of this video. Hi, welcome to The Art of Crypto, where we give you an analysis from the perspective of the market maker so that you can trade alongside them because we all know that the market makers are the ones who move the market and it would be a foolish idea to be trading against them. So let's get right into the video. Let's first talk about what is the next move for Bitcoin and what is the opportunity that lies for Bitcoin? So in last week's Bitcoin video, I mentioned that you want to see a confirmed breaker structure on the daily chart above this high in order to confirm a bullish trend. We did not get that. Now you might be wondering, hey, didn't the price go above this previous high? Shouldn't that be a break of structure? However, you also need to determine if the breaker structure is a false breaker structure or if it is actually a confirmed breaker structure. Now, I share a lot of these infographics on Twitter at underscore DR to crypto. So make sure you follow me on Twitter if you want to see more of this. But a confirmed breaker structure only happens when you get a body close above or below that previous swing low or swing high. In this case, that is a false break structure because the market makers can always just manipulate the price to go below or above the swing high to take liquidity, right? To take liquidity before they move the market in the other direction, which is this is going to be a fake move. And it does not matter how big of a wick there is below the level. As long as the body does not close, beneath that level, it is considered a false break structure. So in this case, that would be a false break structure. This would still be a confirmed break of structure. So in this case, on the daily chart, at least you can see that this is a false break of structure and it was purely price manipulation. So this is a simple tip that will hopefully increase your profits a lot. And some people might immediately have the question of, hey, what time frame do I use to determine if this is a confirmed break of structure or not? The answer is whichever time frame you're using. In this case, we're going to be using the daily chart because we understand that every single market maker out there, at least the big boys, when they're looking to place like the biggest positions and to get really involved in the market, they're not going to be doing it from like the five minute chart or the one minute chart. They're going to be doing it from the daily chart. And in this case, since we want to trade alongside the market makers, we're going to use the daily chart no matter what. So in this case, the daily chart is going to be a very good confirmation to determine if market structure is going to go bullish or if it's going to be bearish. At the moment, since we did get the false breaker structure, you might assume that we are immediately bearish. But let me give you an opportunity right now, because right underneath this swing low right here, and by the way, a swing low is simply a low that is the lowest point beside like the in the middle of those two candles. Basically, I think I just drew a face. So yeah, it's actually like a thing we could draw like a like a goblin or something, you know, and draw some wings and it'll become a bat or something. Anyways, I digress. So what you want to remember, this is going to be another pro tip, is below every key swing low or swing high, especially a swing low or swing high that exists on the four hour chart and above is going to lie liquidity. And you might be wondering, hey, what is liquidity? Well, if you think of the market in terms of, let's say the market is a Ferrari. Liquidity is the fuel that allows the Ferrari to go up or go down. So liquidity is the fuel that moves the market. Without liquidity, the market makers cannot do what they do in terms of pricing the market up or down. So in order for the market to go up, you need to take the liquidity below. In order for the market to go down, you need to take the liquidity from above, as you can see from here. And it is not just this example. If you look through literally every single instance back in the past, in order for the market to go down, you need to take the liquidity above. Make sense? And in order for the market to go up, you need to take the liquidity below. So as long as you remember that, your trading profits should shoot up by quite a bit. So after you take the liquidity here, there exists an opportunity for you to go long because currently you have relatively equal highs above the, or basically at, at this point right here. And if I go onto the four hourly chart, you should see this a lot more clearer. Now, relatively equal highs and relatively equal lows provide an even better, like an even bigger opportunity for you as a trader, because every time you see relatively equal highs or relatively equal lows, you can guarantee that the market makers are going to go back for that liquidity. So relatively equal highs, these will be targeted at some point. So when are they going to be targeted? In my opinion, if you take out this low right here, which currently, if you take a look on the chart, you might see relatively equal lows right here and right here. So that is liquidity. 
Now, how do I know that this is a confirmed swing low? Basically, this candle has already closed, so that candle low is like the lowest point. So once this level gets taken out, which is at about $18,930, once that level gets taken out, I'm looking for a rebound of the market, at least back to this trend line right here. Now, you might be wondering, do market makers use trend lines? And the answer is well, probably not. But I can tell you why I use trend lines, and it is not the way that you're expecting it to, because whenever you see trend lines, right? Retail, you you can immediately expect a bunch of retail traders to just look at the trend line and like, oh, wow, so the price got rejected here because of the trend line. So it's trend line resistance. A price is supposed to find support here. So, you know, the support is going to hold. So I'm going to go long here and it's going to go to the moon, baby. That is how most retail traders would look at it. But from a market maker's perspective, this is all just liquidity, right? Just think about how many retail traders are going to place their stop loss right beneath this level. And it's so easy, right? You can just literally wick the price down just a little bit, reverse it, and basically you stop everybody out. So ultimately, you need to read like one level deeper to understand what the market makers are seeing. And that is what I'm hopefully trying to educate you on from this YouTube channel. And if you found value from this video so far, it would help me immensely if you could just drop a like on the video. It helps me a lot more than you think. Anyways, basically what I'm saying is that once this level has been taken out, you can go for a long and the target for that long is going to be right here at this four hourly bearish order block. Now, is this going to give a lot of resistance? I don't think so, but it is still a very reasonable level for you to take some profits. In fact, I would say that the first profit target is going to be right here at 19,550. So once you do that, you'll come down something like that. And then if the market is still going to be going lower, then fine. Maybe this was a confirmed breaker structure and this was not a false breaker structure and the market's going to just keep going down. Then I would ideally look to close out my position within this block right here from 19,300 to 19,550. So if you still have any long positions open, I would highly recommend just de-risking yourself at around this block before, you know, the market takes another dump. And if the market is going to go up, then you can always just get back in on a retrace, which is another pro tip, which is to never FOMO. A lot of people get wrecked in the markets because they FOMO, basically. Like they look at the market going up and they're like, oh, I need to get in before it's too late. But the reality of the markets is that nothing ever pumps straight up forever, nor straight down forever. There is great power in knowing this because once you understand this, you will never FOMO again and you will always try to wait for the best entry to present itself. There is no point taking a subpar trade because there is literally thousands of crypto coins out there. And if you don't get a good setup from this coin, you can always get a good setup from another coin. And that basically is like my philosophy of trading, which is take less trades, but take better trades. So even if you do miss it and the market just goes up, it's very hard to predict like, oh, AOC says this must happen. So this will happen. Well, I can give you the probabilities and I can tell you exactly what you want to look for and exactly what you want to do when those like conditions fulfill themselves. But one thing I cannot do is predict the market to like 100% certainty, which if I did know that, I'd be hanging out with Elon Musk, I'm like no cap. But anyways, never FOMO. This trick of just sitting back and waiting for the market to do its thing first before you get in is going to help you a lot in reducing FOMO and increasing your profits. Now, ideally, I think the target is going to be at the one day relatively equal highs and even beyond. Now, my target honestly is at 21,000. But before I talk about that target, I wanted to share with you just one last little thing, which is if I draw a fib from this swing low to that swing high right there, you can see that the golden pocket, which is basically the 0 0.618 to the 0 0.705 is right here. And the price is currently right here. So within this massive move here, which is not really massive, actually, it's just like 2000 points, $2,000 worth of movement. But still, on the daily chart, you can treat this as like one swing. And then this is perhaps the second swing. If you just treat it this way, right, price is actually looking a lot more bullish than you think, because this currently right here, the fact that price is at this zone means that this is just a deep retrace and price is not actually going to go lower to basically like 17k or even 16k to take out the one day relatively equal lows which i pointed out in the last video which is right here you can see like these two relatively equal lows and if you remember what i said earlier about liquidity you would think that this might be the target but however this might be looking a little bit too like far-fetched a bit too long term so if you look at the most immediate move, you can see that right here, this is a deep retrace and it might actually signify a really good time to buy. Hence what I'm saying earlier about going long here. 
Now, I will have one other piece of evidence or like data to support this claim, but which I will share later. But for now, let's talk about the targets. Firstly, it's going to be, well, you're going to want to de-risk yourself here just in case. I don't know if the market is just going to come back up here and, you know, retail traders are going to look at the trend line and like, oh, price got rejected at the trend line, so it's going to go down. You know, if that happens, which there is a chance, then you have de-risk yourself and you can get out of the markets without any harm. But let's say that you still hold on to some of your position, then the second target is going to be right here at $20,460. This is based on Binance. Just adapt this to whichever exchange that you're using. So price targets the relatively equal highs. And honestly, I don't think this is going to be the end of it because right here is a key level called 21,000. Well, 21,000 dollars is essentially a key level because this is, if you just take a look on the one day chart, this is a fair value gap. Okay, this blue box right here is a fair value gap. And if I draw a fib from the top of the fair value gap to the bottom, you can see that this right here is right at the 0.5 of the fair value gap. So this is going to serve as a really, 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 really strong level for you to take your profits. Now, no matter if I am aiming for Bitcoin to go for a higher target or whatever, I am going to secure most of my profit at 21,000. If it goes higher, again, there is no need to FOMO because nothing ever goes up straight forever. Nothing ever goes down straight forever. Forever. There is always going to be a retrace, just like how everybody who FOMO'd in to Bitcoin at this point right here would have got absolutely destroyed because look at what happens right after. And to those of us who understood the proper way of trading, we would have understood that this is just a deep retrace and we always wait for price to come back into the golden pocket before we go up. Now, the other piece of evidence that I want to give you guys is basically has to do with the midterm elections because if you look at the data, dating back to 1942, 1942, that is 80 years, okay? Every 12 months, right? 12 months after every single midterm election since 1942, the market has always rebounded higher. Oh, the market has always resulted in positive returns for 12 months after every midterm elections. The next midterm election is going to come in the first week of November. And usually what happens is that October is usually a year where, take a look at this, stocks have historically bottomed in October and rallied by an average of almost 32% in the next 12 months. This is data since 1942. Now, is this time going to be different? How should we use this data? Well, let me get into it. Firstly, it is important to note that since 1942, there has not been like a midterm election that starts right in the same year where a recession has started. So this year is very different. As Mark Twain is credited with saying, history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So how should we take this data into account? Well, firstly, because of this global recession, the Federal Reserve is likely to continue rising interest rates over the, well, the upcoming 12 months. So growth is definitely going to be stifled. However, based on data that I have shown you from the chart, which by the way, it's very hard to hide what you're trying to do on the chart. No matter how big of a market maker you are, if you want to like accumulate your positions here or distribute your positions here, it will be visible on the chart. And that's why I am such a big advocate of basically learning technical analysis in the proper way. So knowing that data, currently we are still bullish until otherwise proven so. So October would be a month where you look to go bullish and Honestly, I think November is going to be a great month for just anything because recession or not, the Federal Reserve, as well as the politicians are currently slowing down the rate hikes, trying to bring down inflation. They're basically depleting the strategic petroleum reserve just to keep the people happy. And it will make sense that they continue to do this for a while more. Now, I actually just wrote this article about the oil you know, issue and how Basically, for context, right, by the end of 2021, there was 600 million barrels of oil in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which is, well, a reserve meant for times of emergency or times of war. But in order to please the people, because, well, oil prices have been going absolutely bonkers, in order to please them, they have depleted, right? It is down to 400 million barrels of oil in less than a year. So they've already went through like these kinds of lengths in order to keep people happy. And it will make sense that they will continue to do so in the month of November. So with all of this data adding up, am I saying that it is a guarantee that we are going to go up again? I can only give you guys the key levels and the levels to pay attention to, but I cannot tell you exactly what's going to happen. Currently, it does seem that the probabilities of price going higher in the month of November and October is higher 
compared to it going lower. But we should also consider the inverse side of the equation and figure out if there is a lot more downside to go for the stock market or not. Firstly, the important thing that you need to take note of is that if you draw a fib from this low to that high right here, which is basically the 2020 March low and the 2021, or well, basically 2022 beginning high, you can see that within this macro range right here, the price of the S&P 500 is actually still in a premium zone, which means the algorithms that move the market currently still consider this to be, well, too high, right? The prices are too high. Anything below the 0.5 is considered a discount. So the algorithms, important thing to understand about these algorithms is that they want to keep the market in equilibrium as much as possible. The job of the algorithm is to balance the market. So in that sense, it will make sense. I swear to God, I'm not trying to rhyme this, that it would make sense that they would want to bring the price below the 0.5. And in this case, there are two key levels that we want to look at. The first one is going to be this fair value gap on the daily, which has not been filled for practically two years at this point, which is right here. You can see that there is a fair value gap where there is zero price action. It's just a gap of liquidity there, basically. And the second one is going to be these, like this relatively equal lows right here that just happens to coincide with the 0.618 of the macro range. So these two levels at about 3429, 3430 and 3200 is going to be key levels that if the price of the stock well, S&P 500 reaches either one of these levels, it's going to be one hell of a buying opportunity. So make sure you just set your alerts at these levels. For me, I'm just going to set a couple of alerts so that I am notified when this has happened. Now, secondly, remember what I said earlier about in order for the market to go up, it needs to go down. Oh, basically, this is a swing low right here. So it will make sense that if it goes down, it'll go up. So that just puts into context that, hey, maybe we might not have found the bottom in October yet, since, well, it's only the first third of, no of October. But heading into November, I think it will be well, safe to say that the probability of the market's going higher and finding a bottom, like the market's finding a bottom in October and going higher in November is pretty likely. So just have a little bit of a longer term vision and hopefully you will be able to take advantage of this situation to make some juicy, juicy profits. Now, if you think this video was valuable, you will find way more value in this video where I give you the top three coins that you should focus on in the month of October to get the maximum amount of gains. And I'll even give you the exact trade entries. So make sure you check it out. And for the people who are still here, I know you think that this video was valuable because you're still here at this point, but the truth is the people who work with me one on one get 10 times the results in one tenth of the time. You can watch as many of these videos as you want, but having someone to push you and guide you in the right direction will make things so much easier. And honestly, when you pay for something, you pay attention. So if you want to work with me, I'm about to take on 20 students into a 90 day mentorship where we will work together really, really closely and you will very likely get your ROI back within 90 days or less. To apply, you should have at least 10K in your training account if you want to get your ROI back really quickly, but 5K is a bare minimum. All you need to do is drop me a message on Twitter at underscore the art of crypto if you're interested in changing your life in the next 90 days. Currently, we already have a few spots filled up, so don't take too long to think about it.